Welcome to live stream number 37. Numero 37. Um, I'm very excited because I made some uh, improvements to my um, to my uh, audio setup. Audio quality is a little bit improved here today. And, um, oh gosh, there's a guy on LinkedIn helping me out. I wish I had his his name handy to shout him out, but uh, I owe that guy some definite beers. But um, anyways, um, oh yeah, I got to pull this up on, uh, pull this up on the old YouTube. Live stream. Cool. So let me bump this up. Curious what this looks like at this size. Yeah, this is a good size for the screen share, I think. Just bumping that up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I need a better, still need a better solution. Anyways, um, got that going. Feel free to drop any questions or comments in the stream there. And uh, let me jump on into the content. So first up, whoa, my air table is going bonkers here. First up, um, this is a Commerce Hero advertisement. Uh, we've got this, is, this was my this was my funny tweet yesterday. This Halloween only Commerce Hero has a BOGO special on senior agency M2 devs, four for the price of two. Voidware. I was trying to remember what that phrasing is that they always say when they do uh, when they announce things on the radio. It's void where prohibited. Terms and conditions apply. Um, but seriously, though, I do have four devs. So, and the two for the four for the price two is actually not true. Got to pay full price. But uh, <clears throat> anywho, um, yeah. So a couple, couple, uh, a uh, uh, couple, an, a few. Um, uh, devs that look really solid, um, who are available to be snapped up. Time zone is a little rough depending on how flexible you are in terms of time zones. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I don't know all of the details related to like the layoff, but my impression is that, you know, these are, you know, it's one thing if somebody gets let go because they're not a good developer, but then there's other scenarios where a company makes a, you know, a strategic decision for whatever reason. And then you've got devs that are like solid devs that have been with the company for multiple years kind of a thing that are all of a sudden available. So that is the deal. Um, go ahead and uh, hit me up on link. Maybe LinkedIn message is probably the best way to hit me up if you're interested. And uh, we do already have several uh, interested parties that are in discussions. Well, I don't know if they're in discussions yet, but uh, we are working on uh, making some connections there. So uh, you're going to want to jump on this quick. Uh, time is running out. Act fast. Okay, next up. Next up. I have a headache today. I hate headaches. All right, so this is a really interesting um, tweet thread I saw from Andrew Wilkinson. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's a bit long, but uh, despite being a journalism school dropout, I've always loved the news every morning for the past decade. I've read all the big papers. Da -da 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 -da. Then I would pick up our local newspaper, uh, the Times Colonist. I can't remember offhand where he's located, but that's sort of relevant to the um, the topic. Of, oh, Victoria, Canada. Um, so anyways, the, the point is, the gist of this is that he created, um, here we go. So earlier this year with zero business plan, I started hiring investigative journalists and we got to work. I'm excited to announce that we just went live with the Capitol capnews.ca, a news organization focused on in-depth investigative news in Victoria. Um, and so this is super interesting, sort of just within the topic, I guess, of like basically like media. Um, um, you know, uh, Andrew is a 
person is a is a you know a, a founder tech founder and um oh he's a co-owner of dribble oh okay wild yeah so he's a heavy hitter and um uh oh and then this tiny capital thing is super interesting as well he's he's um they they buy i don't know if he's an investor but they basically buy businesses um yeah, so they start buying and invest in wonderful internet businesses, which is really cool in and of itself. Um, so anyway, tech founder um, who was like, hey, what the heck? I'm going to start, you know, I see a need um, for, you know, local news in, in his area. And he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just start hiring some uh, reporters and, and just go for it, you know? And it's like... Um, it's just really cool, like in this day and age that, you know, these these types of things are are possible. And like um, if you want to just start something, you can. And it's sort it's it's, it's interesting, right, because like, um, you know, local newspapers were sort of killed off by the Internet in a certain sense. You know, local newspapers used to have uh, classified ads, which had a lot of revenue that got killed by Craigslist and and again, by different aspects of the internet, online news publications. And then you've got the handful of major news publications, the, the New York Times and the big ones that that have, um, you know, survived, uh, even though, of course, their business models have been have been, um, you know, you know, pretty significantly impacted. And so it's 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 like a it's like a full circle where now you have somebody that is, you know, wanting to invest in their local community. Um, and invest specifically in in news uh, related to their local community, uh, and of course, this is a you know a tech entrepreneur who's you know um, done well you know you know off of you know internet businesses essentially, um, who's now able to create you know his own uh, publication there in his in his uh, city or, or region, um, and so yeah, so it's like a full circle from sort of like the internet essentially like killing off the local newspaper to now sort of re recreating it, reinvesting in it, um, in a, in a, in a modern way. And of course I haven't actually like read any of this stuff. Obviously this will be super relevant to, to people that are in that area. Um, but I'm, I'm assuming this is really high quality, um, you know, journalism and he's like hiring, you know, people, you know, like, legit investigative journalist so super super interesting um and yeah that's that was pretty much what i want to say about that so if you want to start something just go for it all right um i kind of want to change the order of my things here but i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna avoid the urge to change the order of my topics um man this headache is killing me I gotta keep drinking water. Um, basically, so this this particular topic is on the topic of fitness, and then there's a there's another topic on the topic of content where I talk about like talking about fitness. So there's a meta comment on this, which I should have done first, but whatever. Um, so I had this I had this interesting thought. Like I was at the gym, and um. You know, there's so much information out there on the internet as far as what type of workout should you do, what diet should you follow. Like, there's if you ever search for that kind of thing, you find a bajillion, um, you know, websites and 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 opinions, and it's really um, hard to know what. And every and so many different people are selling things, from selling personal training to selling. Um, you know, to selling uh, diet programs to information products on th you know things like that. Like, essentially, every time you look on the internet, number one, you're getting information from someone who's trying to sell you something, which doesn't make the information not true, but it makes it sort of biased. Um, or you know, you're getting opinions from people. And you don't know if you get an opinion from somebody like you don't know if you're getting an opinion from somebody who happens to be in great shape or if they're not in great shape. It's just like which is sort of important <laughs> if you're if you're trying to figure out how to get in better shape. And so I was thinking like literally just the gym might be the only place where you can get sort of unbiased information on. Um, 
I got to expand this because it's not showing me in my, my full. Yeah, where well, you can get unbiased information on what workouts are effective um, from people that aren't trying to sell you something. And, and by that, I mean literally just observing people. And, and so like, you know, you see people that are in like really good shape and then you see the types of workouts they're doing. Um, you could probably even go up to them and ask them. Like I've thought about maybe asking a couple of people what workout program they're doing, but I haven't done that yet. Cause I don't want to be like, you know, that guy, but even whether you ask them or just observe, like they're not selling you something because they're just there working out for themselves. Like, whereas anytime you see something on the internet, as powerful as the internet is as an information discovery uh, mechanism, everything you see there is sort of biased because they're sort of trying to sell you something, right? Whereas like the gym might just be the only place where you can just observe people, see what workouts they're doing, and then correlate that to like how good of shape they're in, which of course is not, you know, still doesn't necessarily tell you there's different people have different genetics, different body types. So that doesn't necessarily mean what they're doing is going to work for you um, and stuff like that. But I, it was just this weird thought I had that like as much information as there is um, on the internet, like the good old fashioned, just local gym might be the only place where you can actually get unbiased information on that particular topic. Okay. Next up. Um, ah, this headache is killing me. I already took some ibuprofen. So just wanted a quick recap of the, um, some of the things, uh, um, some of the elements of the um, podcast we did on Wednesday, two days ago um, on Mage Talk. We, um, it, was, it was great. We had, um, uh, we had uh, the uh, CEO of AmpJar on who's a really cool guy, Australian guy, actually British guy who moved to the Australia, moved to Australia, completely lost his British accent and sounds like he's native Australian, but Australians are just automatically cool. Like automatically. Uh, yeah. So Pete Davis, um, the CEO there. And, um, anyway, you're going to want to listen to the mage talk episode when it lands. I think it'll probably be landing any in the next couple days. Um, it was a great episode and, um, it's it. They have an interesting model because they do, um, I'm just trying to zoom out again, the responsive tablet view of most websites is a little tricky. Actually, this is pretty good. Um, so they do an interest, they do an interesting combo of things. They do, um, email newsletters. Um, and ads and the email newsletters, they sort of help you generate them using your social media, uh, which is interesting. I talked recently about, um, fam F A M, which is a new product that Noah Kagan launched, which does this, uh, for Shopify specifically. And so it's, it was interesting to come across this and be like, Oh, that's wild. Like, I think it's a really smart approach. And then, um, they also, they handle ads. They basically, we talked about in the podcast, they have a really interesting model where like as a brand, um, you can, within your emails, you can plug in other, other brands. So let's say you sell shoes and then there's a brand that you love that sells bracelets or something like that. You can plug their content into your email really easily. And then you get, I think some kind of a commission on that and whatnot. Um, but like the interesting thing about it is that um, people don't do it for like, it's not just like, oh, it's just for the money. It's just for the commission. The most important reason they do it is because they really like those brands and, and, they, and they want their brand to be associated with them. And, and, and also it makes for a better email for the end user, for the end customer, right? Because instead of just seeing shoes, you know, now they see shoes and then they see bracelets from this other really cool brand. And they're like, oh man, that's awesome. Um, so they're, they have uh, the customer, the type of customers they had, I think the word Pete used to describe them is sort of radically transparent and authentic. Um, 
where, you know, you can see sort of behind the scenes on Instagram of them you know, sort of building their brand and, and, and I think even supply chain type of stuff, you know, and things like that. And like, so really cool, um, customer base that, that they have. And then, um, you know, as an influencer, um, you can basically, where was this as an influencer, you can, you know, essentially promote different products that you like. And, and, um, what was really cool as he said, is that like the, the brands that use their product have like a really good relationship with their customers, like a really, like the customers really trust them because they're, again, they're authentic. You see, you're directly interacting with them on Instagram and, and seeing, you know, their face on video and they're not just this, they're kind of the, the opposite of the big corporate entity you know, there's this real personal relationship. And so like they have this really strong relationship with their customers, um, such that like the customers literally want other product recommendations from them, um, because they trust them so much. They know that they would only recommend stuff that, you know, was really good. And so anyways, really interesting mix of functionality in that Ampchar has and, um, had a great chat and got, got to learn about, um, uh, Pete's background and anyway, it was cool. I just want to give a quick, quick overview of that. So you're going to want to, uh, check out that mage talk when it lands. Okay. Next up. <clears throat> Every time I try to look to see if I have chat messages, I can feel the, like the, um, the headache even worse. All right, next up, Magento Live EU. So um, I am actually going to be on my buddy TJ's live stream later today. And one of the things we wanted to cover was this. So I sort of wanted to give myself an excuse to review it. And of course, TJ is going to have a much, a much bigger audience on his stream, which would be awesome. Um, okay, so this is kind of a long post, but uh, I'm literally just going to try to read this on the fly and commentate. To cover every moment would be a big task. Customer experience right from the off. A significant amount of discussion revolved around the evolution of customer conversion. Breakout session of mobile. Com okay. This is proving to be a little difficult to recap here on the fly. I was hoping for something a little more, a little more bullet posty. Um, okay. That's an interesting photo. Inspirational story. Okay. B2B. Um, presentations were per common sharing channels. I'm looking for like specific, um, pieces of functionality and stuff. Yeah. So I'm, I'm realizing that this post is more sort of describing the experience of attending the conference as opposed to kind of like the specific, what I want to get at was like specific announcements. Um, I wanted to try to drill through like specific announcements, which I'm struggling to find here. So that's okay. I'm going to bail on that one. I'll call that one a wrap. All right. Um, next up. So this is the meta topic I referred to previously. So um, you have permission to talk about whatever you want. Um, fitness might help one person. So these are sort of my, this is my like scratch notes, this description to myself. Um, so as, as I've been thinking about content and, and, and doing more content and I've talked about how, you know, I, I find myself wanting to talk about a variety of things. I mean, even, even in this stream, I've talked about journalism and Magento stuff and fitness and specifically fitness is, is a tough one because like, um, for so many reasons, it feels like a weird thing to talk about because for number one, I'm not in very good shape. <laughs> um, I've gotten, I, I, you know, I've, I've made some great progress. I'm really happy about it. I've, I've lost some weight and gained some strength and stuff and, and I'm definitely on the right path, but I'm not some kind of a like, you know, 
example of like being in great shape. So that makes you feel weird about it. Number two, even if I was in really good shape, like that almost makes it kind of worse because then you're one of these like fitness bros that's like, you know, talking about fitness and then that's like kind of, kind of cheesy, um, too. And so I'm like, um, part of me is like, yeah, you shouldn't talk about that, whether it's fitness or whether it's anything, right? Like journalism, right? You shouldn't talk about that. You don't, you're not an expert on that. You don't know what you're talking about. Nobody wants to hear you talk about that. And the thing that occurred to me is like, you have permission to talk about whatever you want to talk about, <laughs> you know, like as a person, you have permission, you know, um, you, you can, you can do, you can talk about whatever you want. Um, now granted, um, certain things are going to be less relevant to your audience. Like for me on my main Twitter account, it's mostly, you know, Magento people, right. Who I know and love. And so I know that if I say something about this, it's only going to be relevant to a smaller percentage of people. Now I am finding the more I'm talking about fitness that like, it's probably a significant, um, percentage of, of, of people that it does matter to. Um, so whatever, but like, even if there's some topic that is relevant to, you know, hardly nobody at all, you know, even if there's one person that it might help the tiniest bit, first of all, that's, that's cool, right? Like you helped one person. Let's say there's zero people that it helps. Even if there's absolutely, you know, not a single person, it helps that you're, whatever you're talking about. It's still, if you want to talk about it, if it occurs to you like, oh, I kind of want to talk about that. I kind of want to express some thoughts on that. Then, then go for it. That in and of itself, like I'm realizing, you know, self-expression in and of itself has value. Like something's in your head and if you don't get it out into the world, if you don't get it on a paper, if you don't, there's something about getting it out into the world. Like, yeah, you could, you know, just talk to a rubber duck in your, in your room and there'll probably be some value there, but there, there's something about putting it out into the world. Even if nobody sees it, even if one person sees it, which in and of itself is a separate struggle, um, when you feel like nobody's seeing your stuff, but, um, even if nobody sees it, literally just the, the act of expressing yourself, um, feels good and, and, and I'm sure is beneficial, uh, you know, on some levels. So like. Yeah. So basically that's it. Like you have permission, talk about whatever you want to talk about uh, bear in mind. And I have a separate topic. I don't know if it's here or later, bear in mind that you do want to try to make things as relevant as possible to your audience. So I'm working on segmenting things. So for example, for fitness stuff, I may create a separate channel, a separate Twitter account where I talk about fitness stuff so that I'm not like overwhelming my main account with all that stuff. So there's, there's smart ways to segment it so that, you know, you're not overloading people with stuff that's irrelevant because they are going to eventually mute you if you're saying tons of stuff that's irrelevant. So you want to be strategic about that, but you can do both. You can, you can talk about whatever you want to talk about, and then you can segment that into different places. So it's as, as, as relevant as possible to, to people. Okay. Um, Actually, I do have another, I'm doing a really bad job of actually like ordering these topics. It's like I do a quick review and I go like, yeah, that order makes sense. And then as I'm getting into it, I'm like, nope, that this order is completely wrong because this number eight here is what I should have talked about next, but I'm going to just do number seven. All right. Replacing the facts. So, um, this is just kind of, this is a, um, business idea. And as I'm talk about segment. Whoa, what's going on, buddy? What is going on there, buddy? As I've been talking about segmenting um, content and stuff, I've been starting to categorize my different topics and I, I have sort of a few high level um, categories, uh, which you can't see because the screen's too small, but I have like seven or eight high level categories that I find that, that I keep coming back to over and over. And one of them is like business ideas or like product ideas. I seem to like to talk about a lot. Okay. So replacing the facts, by the way, when you're editing this video, you can probably fast forward to right where I get into the specific topic of editing facts. Um, 
So there were some tweets from uh, Isaiah uh, Bollinger and David Stilson. Oh, here we go. Um, where they're talking about e-commerce uh, roadmaps and things like that. And then David mentions, we, we still receive fax orders. <laughs> and then Isaiah says, this hurts my soul. Uh, and David says, the last two companies I work f worked at use fax. It hurts my, uh, it used to hurt my soul. Now I just laugh, sigh, and then try to work around it. Um, fax APIs and OCR come in real handy to automate a lot of things. And so then I said, dude, let's spin up a business whose only goal is to replace fax with digital workflows across the boards, right? Like just rid the world of fax. <laughs> let's rid the world of fax. Um, by the way, that's a good hook for this video. Also note to my video editors. Um, we'll probably make some good money while doing the Lord's, <laughs> the Lord's work. So uh, like, like, yeah, like literally, I, I think it'd be dope to spin up a business called like, call it like don't use facts.com or .io. Um, and all it would do, it'd have a cool homepage. It would have probably content on it around like explaining, you know, um, why you shouldn't use facts and then, and then drilling into specifics and dr maybe even like case studies, right? Because like, it's one thing to say for us techies to say, oh, you shouldn't use facts. But what about the real world where you have a company that's been around for 50 years and they have 300 sales reps and they have an existing workflow? Like they need to see some specifics on like, how exactly is this going to be rolled out to my sales team? And is it going to be worth the bang for my buck to change it? Um, factoring in all of the workflows and all of the retraining and stuff like that. Like they're going to want to see some real case studies of companies like them um, that have done it and get into some real nitty gritty. So you, you, for this business, you don't even, I don't even think you need to build any technology. The technology is already out there, right? There's already lots of stuff in place to essentially alternatives to facts. So it, it would literally just be like a business with some educational content and then some, maybe some consulting, maybe you charge, um, you know, some, some, um, some reasonable rates to consult on it and to help people just get off of facts. And, and like the business is really focused. It's like, it's just like you have one goal. Like I love businesses that are super niche and super focused. Um, and let's say you have like, if, like if you're a person that has a development agency and you're doing a lot of B2B work with, with, with B2B clients who have this pain point, you know, this could be a separate business, which serves that need and maybe could refer business to your development agency or your marketing agency or whatever. Like it could just, it's a, it's a, it's a great little standalone business that, you know, could have some great content that people could come, you know, check out, you know, shoot. Maybe even make your rate, your consulting rate, you know, break even on your consulting rate. Like don't try to make any money on the don't use facts.com consulting, just do it at cost just to get the relationships. And then they'll probably need to do some business with, you know, your development agency or, or whatnot for other things. And, and again, you know, you're, you, you may, even if you're not making any profit on this, on this, uh, eliminating facts business, we're, we're doing God's work. Um, to get rid of facts. So anyways, that, that's the idea. Kind of a fun, kind of a silly idea, but honestly, I, I think it could, I think it could actually, um, I think it could actually work. So, all right, next up and last up, um, I need a, need a word for the content strategy of random plus curated. So this ties into what I talked about a little bit earlier. This is kind of, this is what I'm doing with these live streams where, um, I have my live stream, which is a whole bunch of random stuff. And by the way, I don't really expect a lot of people to watch the live stream. I mean, if they do, that'd be awesome. But, um, you know, because it's so random, because it's, it's long, um, uh, I'm, I'm more so expecting people to consume the post, -pro uh, post produced clips, um, so when I take this piece of content, this will go through post-production to my writers and video editors and it'll get turned into a really nice consumable little video clip on LinkedIn and social and stuff like that. So that's where it's going to get the most distribution. 
But I personally really actually just enjoy doing this pretty random stream, live stream, and talking about lots of different things. And then having that second phase where it gets sort of optimized and segmented out. And I was thinking I need, I don't know if there's a word for this, but I was, as I've been thinking about um, content and thinking about this productized service that we're, uh, that we're spinning up called Content Accelerator, I'm thinking like, man, we need to start to develop language for all of these things we're doing. Um, an example of that is I, I came up with a term for the tweet tweets and LinkedIn posts that I do um, where I link to the live stream and then I, I time code all the topics and all the mention and then I mention anybody that's referenced. I'm calling that a mega mention tweet. So it's like, yeah, and th and that's working really well. Um, that's working much better than like posting the live stream. Because if you just if you just post the raw live stream, like even if it's video embedded in Twitter, it looks cool and everything, but it's not so relevant because people don't know what topics are being talked about. There's people don't know if they're being mentioned and whatnot. So it's actually really effective to do that mega mention thing. And I don't know if there's already an existing word for it, but that's the word I'm using. So I was thinking it'd be cool to start to come up with like language for these different, essentially for these different techniques and strategies. So I'm trying to think of a word for this, this strategy where it's like a two, it's like a, it's like a shotgun approach where you're just shotgunning a lot of stuff. And then there's like a, a second curated phase or something like that. So it's like a, it's like a shotgun plus a curation. I, I got to figure out a better, <laughs> I got to, I got to figure out a word for that. So if you got any ideas, uh, let me know. Um, and, uh, and, and if you want to try this strategy out yourself, I, I mean, I, I recommend it. It's, it's a, it's a neat little, um, it's a neat little way to, 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 uh, to produce content. So anywho, that is all I got for you today. We have been going strong for 32 minutes and eight seconds, nine seconds, 10 seconds. So I hope you have a uh, great Friday and a great weekend.